teachers, recently students, and seventies. Thank you. Maybe seated. Okay. On e each of your tables, we have flashcards that we are going to go through the correction to our previous exercises based on the timeline that we have from the chart. So we are going to make the correction together by having those students with the flashcards to come and place it or place those events or information next to the correct time on the number line. Seven is and receiving students, we will now have a look at the timeline here. Our time begins from 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Time intervals in between is 10 minutes. And the event continues up until 9 a.m. in the morning. That's when all the activities stop or the events stop. So on your, or each of the groups on your desk, you have the flashcards with the events written on it. So if you are holding on to one of them that you think the event might occur at this time, 7.30, I'd like you to come up and put your flashcards like the other times. But you had the activity that was supposed to be completed for homework, so you know the different times. So can we have those students now to come up and place your flash cards on the timeline? One down. You others just sit down quietly and let our friends place the flashcards first on the timeline. Okay, can we have a look at the events now that are being pinned up or pasted on the timeline? Look through and see if those events are placed next to the correct times. 
from the information that you were given in your previous lesson. 7.50, get out of bed. Do you get out of bed at that time? You try to put yourself into the situation as a student. Do you get out of bed at 7.50, 10 to 8? Receiving students, do you get out of bed at 7.50, 10 minutes to 8, 10 more minutes before you come to school? Let's try to put ourselves into using this timetable here. Do we get out of bed at that time? Seven is and receiving students? Okay, the correct time that you and I will be getting out of bed would be 7.30 and not 7.50. So correction here, get out of bed should be at that time, 7.30. Start eating breakfast at 8 o'clock when you and I are supposed to be in the classroom. When are we supposed to be having breakfast? By looking through, we will go through it again. 8.15, have a sour. Do you eat first and then you go and have sour? Okay, it's always best for us to have sour first. Have your activities in order. So when do you think you might be having your shower? 7.35. Uh, 7.35, it's up here. That's the time when you should be having your shower. Okay, after having your shower, what are, what are you going to do? What would be the next activity? Okay, you get dressed. So seven is, when do you think you will have get yourself dressed? Okay, 7.40, it doesn't take you long to do all this activity. Then what are you going to do? Okay, you have? Breakfast. When do you have breakfast? Okay, 7.45. It doesn't take you that long to have all this. You have time to go to school. What could be done after having your breakfast? Okay, you comb your hair and then you clean your feet. Where can this go? Okay, 7.50. So we are putting this in our situation as students. We get ourselves prepared before coming to school. After combing your hair and cleaning your teeth, you prepare lunch. At this time? Okay, 7.55. And 8 o'clock, leave for school. So we are making change to this just to put ourselves into the situation of being a student. So this would be the answers that we can have on our timeline. Some places we have different times that we start the day with our normal activities. So take note of those different events that you can do in the morning at the different times so that you come to school on time that you're supposed to be coming to school. Okay, we will now move on to our lesson topic for today. We are now on the new unit which is on chance and data. So this is the beginning of the new unit, and this is the first lesson. And the topic is finding mode and range. So going through the main points on what we should be learning in our lesson for today. The okay, seven is and receiving students, we have few main points to go through. 
definitions of those two words that we are going to have in our lesson for today. Mode or the mode is the value in the data that occurs most times. I will repeat. The mode is the value in the data that occurs most times. That's the meaning of the word mode. The range is not an average. It is a measure that describes how the data is spread out. So quickly copy these two main points down. We still have another two to go to through. So I give you two minutes to copy those two quickly into your notebooks. You do read first and then you write down the sentence. Okay, you should be finishing by now. Okay, let's move on to the next two points. Also the range, it is the difference between the largest value and the smallest value in a set of data. This is still part of the word range. Okay, the formula for calculating or the steps on how to calculate range. Range equals highest value subtract lowest value. Okay, quickly copy those two points down. Okay, you should have finished that. Okay, we will now move on to our learning activities. So referring back to those main points, the activities now, you will have to really understand the main points before we understand the learning activity itself. 
So if you, you read through the definition that we have written down, the activity should be very easy for us to go through. Okay, we have one learning activity now on the PowerPoint. The question is asking us to work out the mode in this set of data. What would be the mode in this set of data? So I will just go through the, just reading out the mode again. Mode is the value in the data that occurs most of the times, or most of, most times. So you look at those sets of numbers and try to work out what is the number that occurs most of the time, which is the mode. So receiving students, we are now going through the learning activity, trying to find out what is the mode in these sets of numbers or the data. We have two, three, three, four, 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 five, six, six, seven. Okay, it should be very easy. I can see students raising their hands up. Shall we go through the answer to just get the answer to these sets of data? What would be the mode? Maria? Four. Okay, four. Any other answers? Receiving students? We have Maria, her answer is given as four, which is the mode in this set of data. Any other answers? Okay, Maria, can you tell the class why did you say your answer is four, the mode is four? Can somebody help Maria? She said four. Do we agree the answer is four? Yes. Can we explain as to why we said the answer is four? Okay, Michael will help Maria. Because there are three four. Okay, very good. Because there are three fours in this set of data. Four occurs most of the time. So if you are working in your frequency table that you'll be coming across in your next learning activity, you will have number three next to number four, or three stroke that will represent number four. So four would be the mode. Okay, four is the mode of dis distribution because it occurs three times. So thank you, Maria and Michael for your answers. Can you have these two exercises to go through together in your groups? Copy and complete these exercises by working out the mode of each of these sets of data. I will give you two minutes to just look at the two and write your answer down as a group. Because it should be very easy because we have another Learning activity to go through before the other exercise. Okay, I will remind you, when you come across numbers like that, try to rearrange them or arrange them in order from the smallest to the largest or biggest so that it will be easy for you to work out the mode. Work as a group, discuss your answer, and then you can all have to share the same answer.
If, you have, if your group has finished, sit up straight so that it gives me a sign that you have finished. We will move on now to our next learning activity before you continue with your next exercise, because these are two different things that we are going to be learning in our lesson. So receiving students, we are now on to the next learning activity. This time now we are trying to find the range of the following heights in centimeters. The heights are given there, 145, 260. Going back to the formula, range is equal to the highest value subtract the lowest value. So you use that formula now to work out the range of these heights. Make sure your answer is given in centimeter. Quickly in your groups, work out the answer to this learning activity. One minute for that. You should have finished now because I've asked you to work, work it out in your group. Work as a group, not individually. Only when it comes to the exercise, then you're going to work individually. Okay, can we go through the answer to that learning activity? So if you are giving your answer, I'd like you to also give the rule that you have used to work out the range and also the figures that you have used and what would be your final answer. So who would like to do the correction for us? You can verbally say that. Seven is, can we have a student to give an answer to that? To the receiving students, you can also do the same. Provide your answer to your teacher. Your teacher can compare your answer with what the seven is uh, giving. Okay, Senen will give us the answer. 15 centimeter. Come again. 15 centimeter. 15 centimeter, that's his answer. What would be your rule that you have used? 160 take away. Your rule that you have used. Range is equal to uh, highest value take away minus lowest value. A range is equal to highest value subtract lowest value. That is the rule that Senen have used, and I bet it's everyone also, the receiving students, I hope you also use that rule. Now, Senen, what would be the, or the values that you have used? What would be the highest value? 160 and 145. Okay, 160 centimeter is the highest value. And what would be the lowest value? 
145. So you subtract 160 centimeters, subtract 145, and you should come up with your answer. So these are the correct steps on how to calculate the range. This is what you should have written in your books. So quickly copy this down. If you have copied it down, good for you. If you haven't, that would be a guide for you for your next exercise. Okay, you should have copied that down. You're not thinking on your own. It's there for you to copy. So can we move on now to the exercise? Okay, I will have to explain the exercise first before you complete that in your notebooks. Okay, you have two of these different tables. Okay, one is now from the PowerPoint. It says, find the mode and range of these sets of data. Okay, let me explain to you the table. Okay, instead of having the numbers written outside like what we have gone through, in your learning activity, you have decided to have it inside a table form. Okay, we should be listening 70s and receiving students so that you don't find it difficult when it comes to calculating your answers or working out your answers from this table. Okay, the table has two columns. One has the shoe size. Okay, we have size four, size five, size six and size seven. Okay, frequency represents the number of shoes that each of these sizes have. For example, I will just give you one example. Size four, the shoe size four. How many do we have? Okay, three. So if we are writing it out, there'll be a whole lot of numbers written. So it's written as that. Size five, we have five shoes, or five students have their shoe size five, or size, sorry, size five, four shoes. Size six, five students. Size seven, only two students have their shoes with this size. Their legs are longer than the other students. It's just an example. So you are to look at the table and try to work out what would be the mode. The mode will be taken out from this table here. What is the number of shoes that contains a lot of, that, uh, that have a lot of students wearing that size? Okay, it's an exercise, so you don't have to give me the answer yet. You answer it within your group first, and then we can go through that. Having in mind, you are also calculating the range. Range will come out from here. Highest value subtract the lowest value.
Okay, you should have comp complete that in your notebooks. This is your second exercise. Find the mode and the range of these sets of data. Okay, from the first one, the figures are very small. The second one, you have the figures are given in centimeter, those are the heights, and also the frequency given, number of each of those heights. help each other. If you are confused, you ask your friend. Okay, if you haven't completed this exercise, I would like you to complete this for homework, and I'll be collecting that for marking. So receiving students, if you haven't completed this second exercise, you can complete that for homework, and your teacher can correct that. The so summary point is now on the PowerPoint. is the value in the data that occurs most times. Two, the range is not an average. It is a measure that describes how the data is spread out. It is the difference between the largest value and the smallest value in a set of data. The rule for calculating range equals highest value, start track, lowest value. So don't forget seven is and receiving students. If you are asked to calculate the range of sets of data, this is the rule that you are going to use to find your range. We have some keywords that we have come across in our lesson for today. Mode, range, sets, data, discrete, average, model, values, and frequency. So you might be seeing these words that were appearing, but we don't really know what it means. I encourage you to copy these words down into your books. Use a dictionary to define their meaning, find what these words mean. Quickly, one minute to copy those words down.
by today receiving pizza our next lesson topic is on finding median materials needed for the particular lesson would be worksheets a for papers pen or pencil and rulers that's for lesson number 85 with that this has bring us to the end of our lesson for today thank you students receiving teachers and students for your participation.